Do you think RFK is going to mess anything up? <sighs> I mean, I fucking hate RFK. Why? Um, okay, I'm going to say a bunch of stuff about RFK that you have to double check. Okay, All right. fair enough. The first thing that bothers me about RFK is that he's got several close members of his family that have been assassinated by the CIA. Mm-hmm. And then he hires as his campaign manager a woman who is former CIA who has officially married his son. So not only has he allowed the organization that has assassinated his family to run his campaign, but that organization is now married into his family. So what the fuck, right? First of all. I thought she was like a, a marketing lady. Yeah. <laughs> Look it up. Former CIA. Oh it's on her Wikipedia. She's technically co-chair, I think. But yeah, no, he hired her. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's running his campaign. The CIA is running his campaign. That's the first reason. Second reason is if you look into it, is how his first wife died. I think it was his first wife. She hung herself, hanged herself in the barn. And then they had a funeral in the family cemetery where she was buried next to the family and they did a photo shoot of everybody crying and shit. Then like within a week, they moved her body to like a remote unmarked corner of the cemetery. Like So they like acted like they were burying her next to all the Kennedys and they fucking moved her body. I just think the fucking dude's a skis. I think he's a CIA plant for real. Really? I really do, yeah. I think he was in there to split the vote away from Trump because he's got this anti-vaccine stance and there's a lot of people that would support Trump but they're so pissed off about Operation Warp Speed and the vaccines that they're thinking like RFK is a really good, you know. I just think he's a skis. I, I don't trust the guy as far as I can fucking throw him. Oh, really? I could be wrong about him. Everybody should double check everything I said. But when I looked into it, I was like excited about him. And then I was like, yeah. fuck this guy. I like a lot. I mean, I, I I'm don't sure know I love much... hanging out with him. Like he's yeah. charming as fuck, you know, mm-hmm. seems like a real person. Yeah. He seems anti-establishment. But if this lady actually is working for or has worked for the CA, then that is 100 percent as like an overco- undercover agent overseas. I think I, I can't. It's been a long time since I read about it, but I read enough to know that I was. Yeah, done you, with can't, him. you can't do that. No, no, you certainly can't do that. Oh, bummer. OK. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, after this, honestly, I... The fact that they didn't make him the candidate is bullshit. Like, that's another thing. Like, the Democrats had it so candid. It's like, dude, you got a Kennedy running as an independent. You you refused to let him on the ballot. And that's why he had to run as an independent. Now you're not even going to give him a, sh- a shot at the fucking uh, convention? Like, yeah, you lost the plot. Like, you, that, I feel like if he if ran... RFK would have fucking beat Trump. As a Democrat, for sure. 100%. Yeah. hundred percent. One hundred percent. They fucked up, but he's probably out of control. That's probably why they didn't do it. Right. Which is why when they're like, oh, Trump is a threat to democracy. I'm like, you don't actually think that because if you did, you would have let RFK You know how run. many times it even says the word democracy in the Constitution? Zero. Zero. It says it's a republic. Mm-hmm. So I hate it when both Republicans and Democrats even talk so about yeah, why do we? Why do we do that? Why do we say Because it's fucking brainwashing bullshit. Democracy sucks. There? Democracy is the number one cause of tyranny. Every single democracy within 300 years has been a fucking tyranny, like literally dictatorship. Every time. I don't know why people act like it's so great. It's this idea, like, here's the deal. Here's here's the real reason you know it's bullshit. I even have a whole chapter in my book called Overcoming Democracy. You have the Democrats, literally named after democracy. All they do is advocate for minorities. Mm -hmm. The definition of a minority community is that it's the minority. Mm -hmm. In a democracy, you have to have a majority to win. So how can you claim to support democracy, but simultaneously only advocate for minorities? Like, it doesn't even make sense. Mm-hmm. Like, the idea, like, like, they're so counter, they, they use the term exploitatively to trick people into thinking that they're the party that represents the interests of the people. Like, oh, you want to do what's good for most people. Oh, you want to do what's good. But the whole point of a republic is to pr- protect individual rights against the demands of the mob. Mm-hmm. So, like... Let's just say hypothetically, we arrive at a place here in the United States where white people become, you know, 30 or 40 percent of the population and the other portions of the population just say we don't we don't feel comfortable with white people um, owning firearms and they just pass a lot like, no, that's why we have the Second Amendment so that the mob cannot overrule the rights of the individual. Like you cannot claim to be a proponent or a supporter of minority rights if you don't support individual rights because the individual is the greatest minority of all. And so. I just hate the term democracy. I think it's abused and exploited. And I understand that we're a republic with democratic processes, I believe in elections and things like that. But like this notion of democracy, it it has a subtle implication that the will of the people is somehow like divine and superior to the actual rights of the individual. 
mm-hmm. and they're often at conflict. What, the, what most people want, like if you want to look at democracy, look at the video of Rodney King getting his ass kicked. Or if you want to look at democracy, look at the Jews getting their, the glass windows of their, their, their stores and shops busted by bricks in Germany during the Kristallnacht. Like that's democracy. Most of the Germans fucking hated the Jews, so they had the right to just fucking put them in camps. Like, fuck democracy. I fucking hate it. <laughs> like, it's a piece of shit form of government. No democracy's ever lasted more than 300 years. It's trash. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, a constitutional republic is far superior. And that's why there's this, there's a reason the word democracy isn't mes- mentioned in our Constitution. And there's a reason that our founding fathers explicitly stood up against the word democracy. You have a republic if you can keep it. Fuck your democracy. Excuse and me. even that seems not, it doesn't seem like the best representation either, because if you look at New York as, as a great example, you have the city, which I understand is, you know, highly concentrated compared to upstate, but yeah. it's, t- they're totally different. Like you totally. wouldn't, you wouldn't even think you were in the same place if you go from Manhattan to something like Albany. I grew up in Illinois. Chicago is like a whole different planet. So why is it that like the city is dictating the entire state? That also doesn't seem fair because you have the real people like that still have their feet on the ground and they understand reality but they're being affected by people that are putting themselves in like a really stressful situation, which I think warps people's minds. Like if you put a whole bunch of people into a city and you're stacked on top of We're each not other, supposed to live like that. you're not supposed to. And it makes your, the way you see people also get really jaded and you start oh, to yeah. assume the worst. Then you Have you been people, to New York? Yeah, I'm from upstate originally. Yeah. So I'd go to the city and I loved it when I was young and now I'm terrified every time that I go. Yeah. But you behave very differently in both conditions. And then if you're in one place for so long, I don't think that you have an accurate... Re- like your perspective on life isn't accurate. I agree with you. Well, and I was it was interesting. I was talking to, I was talking to Tim the driver on the way over here. He lived in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And he said he said, "Look, I was a major left-wing person after college, totally indoctrinated." He's like, "And then I went to San Francisco and I immediately became a Republican." <laughs> I was like, "Well, man, I was like, how is that though because there's there are millions of people that live in San Francisco that are leftists." He's like, because they haven't ever lived anywhere else. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you haven't lived anywhere else, you don't realize how much better it could be. I lived other places, then I moved to San Francisco. I was like, oh shit, this is where left-wing policies lead. Like, yeah. oh God, you know, he, so he saw, and so I think you're totally right. I think there's a lot of people in New York City that think that, you know, there's New York City and then there's the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. And I've heard a lot of this when I lived in California. A lot of people, like I live in Orange County, California, it's a bougie area. And a lot of people would, you know, refer to the Midwest as the flyover states and shit. And it's like shit that I fucking hate because I grew up in Illinois. It is a flyover state technically, but like those are the boys that fucking feed you and they go to war for you and they actually vote for the Republicans you claim to support so much. It's not your fucking coastal states, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I do think there's something to be said for people who have always been wherever they are, thinking that the whole world is just like where they are and not understanding. And it's... It's complicated the way that these cities have had disproportionate influence on on the rural communities in their states and the way that our political system is set up. But I don't know what the solution is to that. Right, or like if is there, there is another one. way to do that or not? Yeah, I don't know. Because you, you just have so many people that live in the city. So from a voting standpoint, I guess if you would apply like an electoral college process at the state level. But I, I don't know. I just think making sure that people don't have their head up their ass is probably the solution. It's just, it's got to be good leadership at the state level, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to solve the ignorance of the, of the, of the city problem. It seems like it's a problem in every major city. Just it really leftism. does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want, it was on your Hodge twins episode and you were saying you would rather be in a blue city in a red state yeah. than a red city in a blue state. And I yeah. thought that was really interesting because, um, so I was born in Southern California. My parents split and then what I part? went, um, like Marina Del Rey area. Mm-hmm. So I did like the whole bi-coastal thing because mom went to upstate New York and dad stayed in California. Oh, so shit. I, I know. So I had to do both. Um, and he was a cop, very conservative. And then you have like these pockets like towards San Diego and mm-hmm. Vista that are definitely red. And you can from kind of a minute forget that you're in California. Like there's not as many homeless people right. and people still love their country. Like that's not offensive. Um, but you don't have the rights that you would assume that you would in like a more conservative red leaning place. So I always talk to my husband. I'm like, well, where do we really want to put roots down and be? Because North Carolina is super purple, like Mm -hmm. probably leaning a little bit blue, but it's, it's purple. And I don't want to be, I don't, I feel like I don't want to be in a place that's like so like dug in on whatever team it is. So I do like the idea of like having 
a whole like a bunch of diversity of thought but Mm -hmm. it it does get scary at times when you're getting into an election season you're like well are they going to change laws around if like california if you look at the laws that they have with um, parents and their kids and the kids can transition and not tell their kids um vermont i think it was just passed a law saying that they could force vaccines on children without parental consent like the schools can yeah and you see these states that are yeah if you send your kid to school on vaccine day it's implicit consent is the language we're using. So, like, if you don't know it's vaccine day and your kid's at school. There's a vaccine day? Yeah, they do, like, all the kids at once. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know what state they were doing this. There's several school districts. There are a lot of school districts that do this. Not, not even several. I think, like, all over the country it happens all the time. Like, vaccine day. Weird. Yeah, they, like, you know, like, the blood donor day? Did you have a blood donor yeah, day? Yeah, we did do that. Yeah, they do, but, like, with vaccines. And if, you, if your kid's at school that day, they just assume. They just do it. They just do it. It's Interesting. Fucked. <laughs> it's fucked up. What if that kid has an allergy? I don't know. That's crazy, but yeah. If he I, dies, he dies. <laughs> he dies, he dies. <laughs> you, sent, you sent him here. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. Oh my god! 